art slides are really messed up now, they're amazing. But I'm Joe, and this is Andre. Let's play Fish Out Babylon. So um, we wanted to focus on five major points, um, things we got from our survey and what we realized. And is partnership, social media, Kickstarter, pop up, and then customer relations. And um, so we wanted to start with the uh, partnership, and I pulled out a quote that says, active advocate is a power to smooth the path for you to get your name into the right conversations at the right level. So the first step, all right, first step, we're gonna focus on is partnerships, and um, this is gonna fall mainly into two categories, which is building on the current relationships they have with places like Boar's Head, and I think Kava, um, and they can expand those and market to people who frequent those places and people who, um, I think other groups hit on this, like possibly marketing their Babylon company as a subsequent or sunset or Boards Head or whatever. Um, and also adding new partnerships and companies, that, especially companies like Fifth Season was one that we, I think it's called, is in Crossfield a bit, which kind of allow. But, um, uh, places like that that already have kind of a hand into the hydroponics market and that can um, reach people that would possibly reach them. Uh, so these are more potential partnerships, yeah. things like Boar's Head, and they have a pre existing relationship with, but especially restaurant, Grenache, closers, they already have things like that. And just advertising around those places because they know that people who are maybe even using their product don't even know it yet because they're some bigger emails and they're getting this out and the hydroponic food grown food and it might be interested. Um, and then lastly we have influencers which we um, which could be companies but we actually thought that we could maybe look into getting potential local celebrities, local people within the market, people who could have a big impact on the market by just kind of saying that they endorse this product and advertising it in their own in their home. Because really in the end it's a personal or not personal, but it's a family style product that you're not gonna um, share with all the friends. So if one um, I don't have an example right now, but if somebody who is very well known around Charlottesville would have this in their home, they could then share that. And I see the dash that we should probably take away. Right? And so now we're gonna go into social media. And from the research that I found um, going on their, res uh, their social media and what other people have said about them is that the media has been reaching out to them and that they haven't been reaching out to media, if that makes sense. And so we thought they need to be more forward with reaching out to them, like news, like NBC 29. And then we looked onto their Instagram and their Facebook and that they post once a month, maybe twice, and thought maybe they should do that more often, just on updates on their products and what they're doing this week and if they're changing things and maybe even like, oh, we just had an installment at Boar's Head, go check it out, this is how it works. And so now we're gonna go into crowdfunding. So um, exploring the idea of crowdfunding, Kickstarter was the best option that we have come up with. Uh, a lot of interviews talked about that. Um, Basically, there's very low competition for other hydroponic devices on that website. You get a lot of exposure, even if people don't necessarily give you money, they will at least see your name pop up, and then if they see that at a later date, they will have already heard of you. Um, there's a 5% fee that Doug actually mentioned, um, which is actually not that big relative to what a lot of other places charge, and it's online, which means that anybody can view it. It doesn't have to be just in Charlottesville, it doesn't have to be just the United States, it's an international platform that can really help get the word out. And so we thought about doing a pop-up store, which some other groups have mentioned, and the two locations we thought would be the best to reach um, people in all of Virginia, maybe potential, potentially other states, be Richmond and Washington, D.C. And it's basically to get the name out there and talk about their product, what it has to offer, um, um, and just give more information and potentially get new customers reach that 100 that they're looking for. Uh, so lastly, we want to focus on customer relations <laughs> because um, through our survey, gosh, <laughs> we, uh, um, there were some concerns that kept popping up over and over and we interviewed people. So pest control, 
was a big, was on almost always the first question somebody would ask when we um, told them what our product was. They would be like, well, how, are, um, how am I going to keep like bugs and stuff from eating on this and getting in my house? And so that's something that I think they need to be more clear about and communicate more either on social media or on their website. Um, also, the cost versus savings. I think one of the group meetings had where said that this will actually save money. We weren't sure about that, so we didn't want to include that quite yet. But just basically the numbers um, on if, in the long term, this will actually be cheaper than just buying normal groceries at a store. That, that's a group incentive, obviously, to buy it if that is true. And so they should definitely include that. Um, and also, and so everything we've talked about before this is basically about getting exposure and getting customers. But since they do not, they're not selling products yet, and even the very nature of their product is something where you're going to have to keep some trays and keep um, maintaining relationships with customers. We think it's really important to demonstrate that they're capable of maintaining relationships by when they know things, when they get their first 100 orders, when they get their first, um, I don't know, when they have set a price for it, when they know when the release date's going to be, just constantly updating their website and social media and letting people know whenever the new stuff comes in. Because since this is such a confusing, instantly confusing product, we think it's important that they communicate everything as best they can.